website, I'll do that. We're setting up a new group. It's called Blankets Anonymous. We should do that. It's for people who... It's like we're doing a radio broadcast. Oh, I don't know what one of those is. Could you clap for me? My name's Dan, and I can't stop thinking about colour work sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if it's Carly or Aunt Carlo or Anna. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just I really want to cast. <laughs> I want to cast under the block. Just, just sit Stop down. Don't breathe. Okay, we've got our puster. <laughs> we've got our pustard. <laughs> okay, take two. I need intervention. Work through the process. <laughs> Apart from when it gets bed, <laughs> and even then, I stick one leg out. <laughs> A whole aisle of toothpaste. It is I mean, ridiculous, top actually. to bottom. How is it? That as soon as the snow comes I down, know. Really? everything stops. <laughs> Welcome to the Bakery Bears, the Big Thor special. <laughs> yes. It seems to be the tradition, and everybody's doing it, certainly on British TV. Whenever we, we, we had, what was it, uh, the Big Freeze special? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. We had the Big Thor special. Yeah. I don't know what's going to come next. No. Why is it? Flooding, the flooding. The Big Flood special. I totally understand the rest of the world's frustration with the fact that the British never shut up about the weather. No. It's not us, okay? No. I'm not certain who it is. But it isn't us. It's not us. I'm so sick of it. But of yeah. course, of course, the weather that hit had a name all of its own. And what was that, Kate? The Beast from the East. <laughs> I mean, how ridiculous. I don't know why we like to name things in this country. But we always do name yeah. things like that, don't we? And I do think it's such a frustration because I think when the media start a ball rolling, yeah. it gets people rolling too and people start thinking, oh no, this is really bad. I mean, yeah. all that said, it was pretty bad. It was. It was really bad. Bryony didn't go to school for three days on in a row. Look, look. Which I can't remember a time that that's happened. Saying that... We think she could have gone on the Friday. The whole country shut down. It, it, it is kind of ridiculous did that you, this happened. Did you I see? I forgot to say. There was a news report and it said, I mean, this can't be right. It said nine billion. It said nine billion was wiped off the UK's GDP because of... The, because the, of lost... Because of the snow. I mean, no. it is crazy that we're so unprepared. And I think <laughs> the reason that we're so unprepared is because we get it so rarely... <laughs> that maybe they don't want to put the money into preparing for these things. I can but only think it's that. The world in which we live in, where people are, you know, spending so much time developing all sorts of wonderful technologies mm. to deal with this, that and the other, how is it that as soon as the snow comes I down, know, really. everything stops? Honestly, and literally, it, it was like... Uh, you I know, went, a ghost town everywhere. Yeah, and, I, and I went to the supermarket... I mean, it was actually when it was clearing and, and you know, lots yeah. of it had gone. I've never seen anything like it. Imagine Christmas times a hundred. Well, this was after. Yeah, I know. Mean, this, this was like on Sunday. We'd been going to, we went to the supermarket during the week and it, <laughs> Trust it, was, me, it was absolutely fine. We got now, <laughs> now, I know that certain parts of the country, you know, certainly if you're out in the country, yeah, country yeah. roads, drifting stuff, yeah. but, you know, we're on the outskirts of a town. They were, I've never seen so many... Plows. The road, the main roads kept were kept never, clear. Never a problem. No, I mean the worst bit was getting off our little, you know, uh, Those estate are the dangerous here. Bits, aren't they? But we're lucky we've got a four wheel drive, so you know it wasn't ever a problem for us. But you know that you went to the supermarket on Sunday, didn't you? Just as it was all going, and I was, I was and just laughing. I was laughing. I'm, I, you know, I'm so glad that you, you sort of get to the point where you can start to laugh at it because it was honestly like trying to part the Red Sea, getting out, you know, from the car park. Because <laughs> literally every space, there was people in cars trying and to get back. I, I, I need bread. You, I think it was a mixture of, it was the beginning of the month, so everybody had just been paid. And also, I don't think people have been going out all week to get the groceries in. So, you know, they thought, right, Sunday, the weather's cleared, let's all go to the supermarket. It was just... 
disastrous. It's just, it is nuts, really. This did, though, create a bit of a problem for us because, of course, this episode was the much publicised... Mm. <laughs> It was the much publicised launch day for our new season, New Adventures. And do you know what? Well, I'm not going to say too much because I am going to say a little bit when you take a look at this. It's my fault this, folks. I should never have announced the new season of New Adventures because look what's happened. We haven't seen weather like this in years, actually. It's completely insane. But we have a solution, because what we need when the weather is cold is a beautiful pudding and custard to warm us up and give us sustenance. So I think it's time that someone got back in the kitchen. Yes, Kay will be back in the kitchen yes. baking. <gasps> baking? Do you know, it just feels right. Yeah, it was fun to do it, actually. It just feels... When I was editing up, and I'm so excited about this, because what we tried to do is we've tried to take your baking yep. and do a new adventures with it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, kind so of you know when we took Boat Blazed in it and we turned it into new adventures, we wanted to do the same thing with mm. Lovely Kay. And when, you know, putting it together, it just felt right. And, you know, coming up to our 100th episode... Yeah. I haven't done any baking for a long time, actually. And then recently I've started making this particular thing, yeah. which is what I made today. I was going to defend you then because I thought you weren't counting the fact that you have been making this No, thing I've been making this particular thing. And I've been making fat rascals as well. And you've also bit. been making I the make... most amazing flapjack. Oh, I did make you some flapjack. So maybe I have been doing a bit of baking. Um, yeah, I made you some flapjack. My goodness. Now, someone messaged me about flapjack oh, right. because a lot of people... When you say flapjack, think of pancakes. Oh no, it's no. not pancakes. But, you know, do and maybe call maybe pancakes, you should flapjacks. do flapjack at some point. Right, well yeah. See, it's really easy. Well, yes, she's back in the kitchen and you're just gonna love. You are gonna love it. And I would really, really encourage everybody just to make this because it's super simple. You will have all but maybe one of the ingredients already in the house, I would say. It's all store cupboard kind of things, apart from one thing. Um, so, and it's really easy, and it's the most delicious thing. But that's all to come later. So yummy. Now, I've been enjoying reading the It Wasn't Like That When I Was Young thread oh, yeah, in yeah. our group. Yeah. And I have a new one for you, ladies and gentlemen. When I was young, when you went into the supermarket to buy toothpaste, there was not... A whole aisle. You bought the wrong one, by the a way. A whole aisle. <laughs> you bought of, the wrong. Yes. <laughs> a whole aisle of toothpaste. It is I mean, ridiculous, top actually. to bottom. Yeah. I just want to get some toothpaste. <laughs> and the problem that this creates, right, is when there is forty thousand different types, is this happens. You got the wrong one, and. I just, I'm so frustrated by it, to be honest. It's the same, you know, when it comes to bread as well. I mean, it's like everything. Yeah. There's like, we seem to have gone, don't we, in the last sort of, 30, I mean, it's probably even a longer stretch of time, this, but, you know, I can t talk through through my lifetime, through the first time I remember going into a supermarket, mm. which probably was about 10. You know, the choices that were there, there was a little bit, but... There wasn't so much that... Yeah, there is way too much choice these days. Your brain way just explodes because you're yeah. like, which one do I need yeah. to get? There's a million different types of paracetamol as well. It's the same thing. <sighs> different brands and like paracetamol advance yeah. and express yeah. and um, meltlets. Yeah. And it, it's, it is ridiculous. It's like, I just want a paracetamol. Do you know what we need to remember? Less is more. Less is definitely more. And I think the more choice that you put out there, the more it dilutes everything. Because mm. everything mm. just then gets diluted down and down and down. Mm. It's the same with TV channels, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. you spend so much time just looking scanning. for something decent yeah. to watch. Well, we don't scan TV channels, really. But no, no, I do. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking for stuff for us to watch. For us to watch. And do you there know, in the old days... too much choice. We're in the old days here. Four channels. Well, 
three channels. Yeah. I remember when Channel 4 came so do in. So I. So do I. So there was three channels, BBC One, BBC Two and Yorkshire. And it, it and made you it. it made you so much more accepting. But also as well, when you look back at what was on, it was all really high quality stuff. Well, it was, yeah, because it was a, a fairly new thing, really, in terms of... Yeah. I remember reading an article once in the paper, and it was all about how viewing changed, TV viewing changed, the day that the remote got invented. Oh, right. Because... So you don't have to stand up to change yeah. the channel anymore. Yeah. Mm. And I remember, I remember oh, being yeah. sat on the sofa. It was all like, you get up and turn yeah, it yeah. over. No, you get up and turn <laughs> it over. Turn. It's your turn. Yeah. And then I remember times being sat with my brothers watching things where none of us were prepared. <laughs> so we just up. carried on watching whatever was on. I'm not getting up. <laughs> I wonder how many programmes had their viewing figures inflated because yeah. people couldn't be bothered. To and get up and change. The other thing that I used to love as well was, and this is fact, is it, it was more, I'm sure it was Morecambe and Wise. It was the Morecambe and Wise Christmas oh, special. Yeah, yeah. The power companies had to be prepared really? for the first break because there was a massive spike. To put the kettle as on. As everyone put their kettles on. <laughs> Don't you love facts like that? That is just brilliant. You know, they all must have been there ready with mm-hmm. their, right, come on, lads, here we go. <laughs> Turn the lever. What a two weeks, though, this has been. Yes, we've had the weather. Brought forward the filming of the Bakery Best Pudding Club coming later on in the show. But Kay released the second I did. of your platinum patterns. I, I did. Even, was that Monday this week? Or was it? No, it, was. it wasn't Monday. Oh, it might have been Monday. Yeah, yeah it's Wednesday now. It yes, was. yes, I think it was Monday this week. Yeah. But not only that, so the twister is near. The out twister there, the hat pattern, yeah. Platinum pattern. But also, you have another pattern. I do. Going on general release very soon. I do. That's in test knitting. Yes. Has anyone even seen this? No. <gasps> oh. Well, a few people, but not anybody that's watching. Forget sure. what's on and what's off your needles. I want to see them now. Oh, do you? Show me, show me. Well, this is it's a pair of socks, and I. I designed and knit this pair of socks in the space of a week. It happened really, really quick, quickly. And that often is the case. I think I've said this before, actually, that when an idea comes to me, I've just got to do it. I was inspired by a couple of things. One was um, a mug that I'd recently bought. And the other, it was a combination. I was looking through some pattern books I was drinking a cup of tea out of this mug and it was raining at the same time. And this mug has got like little raindrops on it. And it was those things together. And I just came across something in this pattern book and I I was looking for something else as is usually the case. And I came across something. I thought, oh, if I change that and do that and do that. And I did it and I knit up a swatch really quickly and I thought, oh my gosh, that's really pretty. I'm gonna cast on a sock. And I cast it on and then I'd done the pair within a week and then I wrote the pattern up a couple of days after that. So it was really quick and I'm, I absolutely love these socks. I'm just so thrilled. And I used a yarn actually that um, I've not had too long. I showed it fairly recently, it was a gift and it was some Vullen Vine yarns and it was a skein of her, of Kristen's fairy hair on the, it's on the Volker base, which is the one with cashmere in and it's the fairy hair. So I hadn't had it very long and generally I would want to hoard it for a while, you know, but this pattern just seemed, I was looking through for some yarn and this just, it it was just perfect. It was just absolutely perfect. And this is the colourway. You've probably seen it on many things, the fairy hair. How, I mean, I don't even know how I would describe this colour. It's kind of like a sort of purpley kind of base, mauvey purpley sort of base, but then there's pink and there's pale blue and there's some kind of lemon, a hint of sort of a yellow in there. It's just really, really pretty and my nails kind of look the same, which is fun. So yeah, so I cast it on, knit the socks. It was just one of those things that just grabbed me and I just loved them. And because my inspiration was kind of raindrops and rain, I was thinking of a name, and I decided to call these the Drippity Drop Socks. Because I just thought that's really cute. And it just describes really the feeling as I was designing them. So I will show you the socks. So here they are. Oh. They're so pretty. The stitch pattern is so pretty. I'll hold them quite close so you can see it a little bit better. 
and it just looks so nice in, in this, I mean it is quite a variegated yarn and the pattern shows up really lovely. It's got a re it's really cushy as I was knitting it. I thought, oh, this is really cushy. I think, you know, I haven't worn these yet, but I think they'll make a really snuggly pair of socks. And I put into the pattern my umbrella toe, which is one that I showed sort of um, recently on another pair. So the umbrella toe is in the pattern and then also in the pattern is the technique that I use to close the gap that I've been doing recently and again I spoke about this a few podcast episodes ago and it's the one where I pick up two stitches not one to close the gap so I've included that and there's a video a tutorial on how I did that in with the pattern what I did was I showed you on a plain sock plain stocking stitch sock how to do it and then I showed you on this actual sock as well. So the, these are in test knitting right now. I've got some lovely testers who are knitting up some samples for me. Not samples, some test knits for me. And I'm hoping to release it on the 16th of March. So I thought we would have a knit along. I can't remember the last time we had a knit along actually for one of my patterns. I think it might have been the Longbourn shawl, so it's a little while ago. But I thought these are so, so fun and the theme, you know, uh, raindrops, it's kind of topical for spring, you know, spring rain and everything. So I just thought, oh, let's just have a nice knit along for them. So I'm going to start the knit along on the 20th of March, which I think is the first day officially of spring. I think it's like the spring solstice. It's either the 20th or the 21st, but I thought we'd start it on the 20th of March. It'll run to the end of April, but I'll talk more about the knit along in Endy Bits. But I just wanted to mention that now. So... Drippity drop socks, absolutely thrilled with them. Now, we don't have time. There's that much going on in the episode today. Yes, and because is. we need to pick a bucket list activity, this episode, which we will, we were supposed to do it last time, Seven Wonders of Knitting, back next episode. Yeah. But we need to tell everyone who won the vote from last time. Oh, right. Yes, Circular Needles got in first time. Yeah. Last time we introduced a category system where there's only things from a certain category going off against each other. And last time we went with yarn. Yeah. You selected merino. Falk Falkland, Falkland merino. merino. I selected handspun. Who and won? I, I don't know. I won. Oh. So handspun. Was it like hand? Was it hands down? No. Oh, was it fairly close? Yeah, it was close. Uh, probably seventy thirty. That's not close. Well, no, no, no. If you think about it, it is fairly close because. You're only twenty percent vote off right. it being tied, so you know you probably got thirty percent of the vote. Right. I got seventy percent of the vote. Okay, well that's fair enough, I think. It's close compared yeah. to circulars against. Mm, that's true. The twisted yeah, that's stitches. True. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so someone's the knitting. I'll be back next time. Kay Jones, what's on your needles? Well, what do you think is still on my needles that I didn't I show last time? Slightly harsh on yourself. Well, I'm not being harsh. I but just want to get really. this finished. It's Dan's vest, everyone. Oh. <laughs> I think the problem is your expectations on how fast you finish stuff is too high. Well, no, I don't think it is. I think it's more that I'm just not inclined to, to knit it. So I kind of have to force myself to do it. So if, 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 you know, if I was motivated to knit it, I would have had it done by now. Says the person who was eyeing up and seriously thinking about casting on one of Jen Steingass's. Oh, I know, but I thought better of that because it was fingering weight and I. And I'm going to knit you yeah, the arboreal the anyway. Well, I'll work up pattern. to that in a year yeah. or two. Yeah. But I mean, the arboreal looks really nice. Yeah. So you're still yeah. going to get a nice colour with yeah. jumper. Yeah, that's true. But. On however, one day, I'll get this. Oh, don't say it like that. No, I'm determined to have this finished by the time we go to spring into wool. Okay. Because it'll be the perfect thing to wear. You okay. know, you can just wear a shirt yeah. and then that on top. Or even a t-shirt. Or even a t-shirt if it's a warm April yeah. day. Who knows? But Remember, I, spring into wool, the, the, the yeah. giveaway, ticket yeah. giveaway still... It's still going. Yes. It does say in the thread the date that it finishes. I think it's round about the 20th of March, actually. I've said that date and that. I think it's round about then. So we will... Announce in the next podcast who's worn those tickets. Cool. Yes. I have finished the back. Where? I've finished the back. Amazed. And I'll show you. 
It's... So, actually, if people go, they might get to see you, me debuting you will, it. You will get to see it because I'm going to have this finished. Amazing. But it's huge. This thing is massive. It's Look. how they'll recognise me. Yeah. I fit, so, I finished the back. Wow. And there it is. I did knit... I feel like I need a pipe with that I, well. I know. I did knit the body, of, <laughs> the body of this a bit longer than the pattern suggested. I think the pattern said to go to something like 40 centimetres, whatever that is. I think it's about 15 inches. I did about another inch just because Dan's got a long torso. I'm hoping it's not too long. I'm now thinking, gosh, if I knit this too long. I don't think, you know, it is what it is now at this stage, but I don't think it is. So there's the back piece all done and I've got stitches here for the collar on hold and then the rest are bound off and that's where you will seam the tops of the shoulders and then you'll pick up for the collar I'm presuming anyway I'm just I'm literally just following the pattern sort of bit by bit I don't tend to read on in a pattern I know that's really bad but I just I just don't I just work on it bit by bit so yes, back's all done. So this is the front piece and I've knit, on this I've knit from the marker up. So I've done a nice little chunk on that as well. I'm not too far off finishing this repeat I'm on. I think I've got about four more, five more rows. And then I've just got one more full repeat and then I'll be splitting for the V-neck. And I think in the pattern I think what it says again I've not really read forward but you basically just work on one piece to the top and then go back these stitches have just been kind of live and then you go back and do that piece and then I think what you do then is you seam it all together you seam it together and then you pick up for the arms and pick up for the v-neck I think that's it and I you know I've never done these this kind of technique before where it's constructed in that way so we'll just see how it goes really I'm gonna work on this and yes I really I mean I'm, I just want to get it finished because I know how much you want it and I mean I'd better cherish it for the rest of well, my life well you better do really because I can't you know being completely honest I've I'm not really, well, I'm not really enjoying it. And that's nothing to do with the pattern. The pattern's perfectly fine. You know, I know fully what I'm doing with it now and it's fairly simple, really. I'm just not, I just don't particularly like knitting big, really big things, I think. And newsflash, um, when I finish knitting the split back snowflake hat, mm. I'm going to cast on the arboreal. Are you? Yes. Right. Bring it on. That's what I, I say. Find some yarn, There's no then. point procrastinating but then that'll be two jumpers you've got I know, to go I know Gosh, could it be much. any more fun than that <laughs> that's a bit much isn't it we're all different types of knitters we are and I and love that I don't think we should really force ourselves to knit things that I mean I'm saying that's that here aren't I and I've forcing myself to knit this and my problem is I, I at the beginning of a project I'm like oh yeah that's great I'm gonna knit that I'm brilliant and then part way in, I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I, I just, I'm not enjoying this at all. I don't know why it is I don't enjoy. I say I don't enjoy big projects. That's not true, you know. I've knit blankets and loved it. And they're much bigger. I've knit big shawls and enjoyed them. So I don't know what it is, really. All the blankets that you've knit, the, the, the big blankets, yeah. they're either mitered squares so it's lots of small items well, that's true. that you're constantly casting on and casting off. I think that's probably or it. it's the bits and bobs blanket where you're constantly Changing casting... bits you, of yarn. Yeah, you're constantly putting on I new bits of yarn. I think you're probably yarn. right. But you see, this is in pieces, but the pieces are big, aren't they, you know? Um, but it's the Drops Alaska that I'm using, and this is colour 45, which is light olive. So Drops Alaska, and I'm still loving the yarn, not had any issues with it at all. It's just been brilliant, and I'm ready to splice in another one, actually. It's so interesting, I think, yeah. because your approach is, like you just said, you cast it on, you knit on it for a bit, mm. you get to the point where you're probably casting off the majority of the types of projects that you knit, yeah. and then you've had enough. And then I've had enough. 
Whereas, I think I just you know, get bored. It, I think I just get bored. I, mean, I think that's it, what it is. Well, it's, it, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? It's I mean, you know, I was really enthusiastic with this until I fully understood the pattern. And once I'd got that in my head, I'm like, right, I've done it now. I can do it. Once I've, once but you I've, can't, though. You've not finished it. No, but what I'm saying is I can, I've can. i proven to myself that I can do it. Well, I don't know what type of an instrument it makes you. Because it's certainly not, it's certainly not project-driven. Well, it's not project-driven, no, is it? No, no. Well... No, it, it, I just want to get it done, so I suppose it is project-driven. In this case, I just want to get it done. Right. Yeah, I suppose so, actually, because uh, process-driven knitters would be enjoying the process. Yeah, I do You're have... not a process-driven knitter. My I, goodness. I don't think I am, but, but saying that, there are some projects that I just really enjoy the process of knitting them. Like, like the bits know, and bobs blanket. Like the bits and bobs, like... Like a mighty square blanket. Yeah. Like blankets. I, I do love blankets. I wonder why. I, I don't know. Why is that? And it's difficult know. because y you can reach a tipping point with blankets because you can only have so many. Whereas I know, and that's socks, why I stop myself hats, knitting more of them, really. Shawls, cowls, things like that. You could mm -hmm. have a million and, and still Well, you say that you, you could run out of, but then you could it's knit blankets and give them as presents, couldn't you? You could, but would you? Well, I just... I think it's more like, oh gosh, you know, would I want to give that That's away? That's my point. That's my Is point. Is that what you mean? That's what I mean. I'd have you to wouldn't be want really, to give it away. I'd give, I'd give one to your mum, absolutely. Yeah. I'd give one to your mum and I'd, I'd give one to my mum. But then after that, I'm not sure. And I have knit one for my friend Sally. I knit her a blanket a few years ago. I would. There are certain people I would. But it's not like a gift, like a hat, is it, that you would just generally give a hat to anybody, I think. You would. But the interesting thing about this is more non wool wearing people yeah would pull out a woolen blanket and get under it yeah yeah than they would I, pull on a hat wouldn't they yes absolutely yeah so it does create an interesting dilemma yeah, I because know. actually a blanket is probably more an appropriate gift for any woman any what any yeah well anybody isn't any it woman really we've all got houses we live in and, you know this is Dan's vest and let's just see where I am next time because Debuting I just want to get at it. The spring I just want to get it. Tickets done. are available. Yeah, I know. People That's will be so coming cool. just to see about can you imagine if I've not got it done now? That'll be devastating. You see, now now that I've set myself that goal, I just need to do it. Stop being a big girl's blouse about it and just get it done. Dan Jones, mm. what's on your new book? Look at that. Oh, it's Ooh, lovely. It's, it's lovely. such a lovely, it's a very simple stitch pattern, but it works. Mm. It's like a broken rib, I suppose. It is a broken rib, Okay, yes. then. Do you know what? Do you know what? That is another example of my transformation into... I, I went to Kay the other day and I said, look what you've done. And she said, <laughs> what do you mean? And I said, I have seven projects on the go <laughs> and I have no idea which one to knit on. Because <laughs> I want to knit on all of them. But I don't know which one I should be knitting on. And that sounds just <laughs> like her, doesn't it? I'm sure that sounds like so many of you. When I first started, mm -hmm. it, I didn't really care what I was knitting, as you know. No, that's true. It was just about the process. Now, I do I do care because I, I know what I like. Yeah, well, that's it. You've just spent that time <laughs> I know what I like. to know what you like. I know what I don't like. And I know I want to knit jumpers. Cool, get on with it. I, well, I'm going to. Yeah. So, this, though... Is we are closing in on the very end of the Dan and Lara project, Dan's year-long sock quest. I failed in well. You not failed. Well, I will have done. No, I don't say. I know like I still that. have time. I still have time to finish them off, but it's just not going to happen because you know. You've achieved what you wanted to achieve from it, I would say. Yeah, I, well, I have, because when you start out with something like this, where it is a amount-driven challenge where I was thinking right okay I want to get 10 done mm. you're very focused on the number but then as you start to learn stuff and experience different things in the process of you know in my case I was knitting through a book you start to find out things about yourself and you start to improve your technique because I was trying to knit so many so my speed my there's no way a year ago that I could have had seven projects on the go because I wasn't knitting fast enough no. you're right I shouldn't say that I failed I haven't failed and it's going to be a fun final show actually I'm going to be filming it sometime in the next two weeks 
and I've been challenged to shoehorn some drumming into the final show. Oh, really? Because if I get some drumming into the final show, this lady's husband says he'll give knitting a try. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, I've got to do it, haven't I? If it means I'm going to bring forth another male knitter, yeah. most definitely. So anyway, this is my favourite of all the socks in the... The, the Lara Neal Which sock architecture book. It? It's the Stree socks. Yeah, it's really I really like the Checked and Squared. Yeah. But I like this more. It's really, it looks really lovely in that yarn. And you really like this pat, the, the, this do pattern really to wear, like don't this you? Pattern to wear, yeah. It gives a nice. Um, it's really nice. About so, a year ago, I will have finished the first ones. Was it a year ago? Yeah, yeah, it's about right. a year ago, because that's when I started. It's the first ones I cast oh, on. So, that's... really, really loving the back. At the start of, of you know what I did, you know going back to this has just been such a breath of fresh air. And, and the yarn, I died. I gave you this yarn as a Christmas present. Didn't yeah, I? and it's lovely. It's just lovely. I got really excited the other day because really nice. there was all sorts of you know lovely sort of pops of colour coming through. Mm. And there's nothing better, is there, on a, on a variegated yarn like this? Yeah. When you're um, getting the little pops here and there, it makes it such an yeah. interesting knit. And I didn't think I'd written down the recipe for this, but I yeah. did. So I think I might, in the autumn, I think it's quite a lovely autumnal colour. It is. I think I'll dice them up. So these are the lovely Stree socks. And let's see how far I get before I film the final Dan and Laura mm. project. That is cool. I'm knitting down another running hat. That's the one that I knit ages ago. Probably, I think it's two years ago that I knit it. But and it's just... It's just, we've washed it several times now. And, and it does spring back. It does spring it. back, we put it in the dryer. And it does, the ribbon does spring back. But it's just kind of losing that elasticity, I think because you've worn it such a lot and it's yeah. been washed such a lot. Yeah. It's just losing that bounce, isn't it? So I said, well, I'll just knit you another one because I enjoy knitting just plain hats. So. I went through my stash and I said, what What do you want? He says, well, it, you said you didn't really mind, but it could do with being fairly bright because all of you, the colours you wear are generally dark, aren't you? And you like having a hat that people can see. I like my feet and my head to be highly visible. Yeah. That way then it limits the chance people that I get run over. People know there's something yeah. in between that. <laughs> so I found this in my stash, which I've not had that long, actually. I can't remember what motivated me to buy it. I think I saw it on someone's feed. And it's a Crazy Zauber ball. And this is the first time I've knit with Crazy Zauber ball. I do have one other ball, which I bought a while ago, actually, and I've just never knit with it. And I think the reason I haven't for socks is because it's... This is the colour I've got. Isn't it lovely? I love it. And it's called... It's colour number 1702. I'm not going to try and say it because it would be a disaster, but I'll hold it up so you can see it. It's 1702. I think it translates as little fox. It might be, I'm not sure. Because it produces this kind of gradient effect, I've seen sometimes where people have knit socks and if you just carry on through and knit the heel flap and gusset, you know, just continually, you'll sometimes get this really harsh line where you've, you know, at that point where you've picked up the gussets and carried on. So I thought, well, I would have to put in a contrast. And then because it's such a, sort of looks like hand spun, because it's such a, a unique kind of looking yarn, I've always thought, well, what on earth would I use for the heel? So this has just stopped me from knitting socks with it. But thinking about it now, I think what I will probably do is I will buy a ball of this, which is just a more plain colour. I think you can get some darker ones, you know, blacks and, and greys and things, and just use that for the heels as a separate, you know, separate colour. And then at least it's the same yarn, and then, you know, you won't lose that kind of gradient effect. So I'm just knitting a plain fingering weight hat. I'm past the ribbon and I've just started the stocking stitch now. So I've knit two and a half inches of rib, two by two, and then I'm just into just plain knitting now. I'm, I'm just doing it exactly the same as I did the other one. I think the ribbon on this one is a little bit longer actually than that one. So that might help, you know, just keep it a bit more. If we get two years, you it. It. well, yeah. yeah, and that yeah, it's not like it's worn through or anything. No. So for this, I'm using three millimeter needles, and I cast on 136 stitches. So it's less than a sock head. 
But a sock head's too slouchy. You know, you don't want a sock head when you're running. It needs to be a fit, fitted to your head. It's not tight tight, is it? No. But it wouldn't fall off if you turned your head upside down. No. No. And it's just a beanie, so there's no slouch whatsoever. And I think I knit the whole thing to about eight inches and then do some decreases. So, and I, I love the way it's knitting up. It does look like hand spun. I think it's really pretty. So, and I, it's just very, it's just lovely, lovely knitting. I do love this kind of project. It's Knit Pro Novas, three millimeter Knit Pro Novas. And I knit all of my like sock head hats on these needles and I really, really like them. Could you do me another? Another? Yeah, well you said you really enjoy that knitting. Well, I can do you another. Excellent. You'd have to choose some more yarn. That's why, that would just be really cool if, yeah. if I could rotate. Oh, right, yes. okay. So yes. you want to have two in rotation. Yes, yes, two yeah. of your lovely hats in rotation. Right. That would be just marvellous. Okay, I'm Because that is my favourite running hat ever. Right. You know, it just shows you. It's just like, it's just, it's not heavy, is it? Because no. you don't need anything heavy, even in the freezing cold days, because you do warm up. When... And, and un an uneducated person would think, how could I run in a wool hat? Mm. Well, no, but you, it does want to be wool. It doesn't want to be, a, a, you know, a man-made fibre. But you rarely see in a running shop yeah, a wool hat. A wool hat. You rarely see it? anyone out running in a homemade wool Well, it wool doesn't hat. let the moisture wick away, does it? Whereas wool does. It, it, I was searching for so long, uh, you know, and I'd had some hats knit in different things, and then you just said, didn't you? And it's just been brilliant. And mm. what's interesting is that's also coincided with me getting a wool running top. And it is the mm. best. Mm. It's merino. Yeah. And it is the best. It's actually, yeah. it's the Finnish Olympic team apparel. Oh, right. Helly Hansen it is. Right. And it's the most amazing running top ever. Brilliant. Because it breathes. You feel the breeze. But you don't get cold. Oh. Speaking so, of hats. Ah. <sighs> Look at this. It takes so much concentration. It, it really does. But every stitch, I feel like I'm getting better, which is really cool. I'm enjoying it. And yeah. I, think, I think you'll look lovely in it. Yeah. You oh. will. <laughs> My face totally disappeared. You look so pretty in it. Yeah, it is lovely. I love the pink and cream. It is. It's just, yeah. it's just so lovely. So it's the split back snowflake hat. I, I so enjoy knitting these cables. Yeah. They're lovely cables. I love that bit. Yeah. And Bryony wears hers all the time. She does. And it's just brilliant, you know, for keeping your ears warm. I can't see the point in knitting a hat if your ears are cold. No. No, I would agree with you. I think what I really like, initially I was a bit sceptical, and you were 2K about, you were worried that the colours were too close. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't stand out amazingly well. But. But I think once it's blocked. But, no, 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 but looking at it, it stands out. You can see. You can see there's you a difference, can, yeah, but it's not that kind of black and white. But you wouldn't but, want that. You know, no, I wouldn't. I think no. an adult wearing this design, yeah. you wouldn't want that. Not, not in a, no, I wouldn't want such a stark contrast, I don't think. So I think for this particular project, it, it was the perfect yarn selection. And what is it, Kay? I've got no it's idea. It's Cascade 220. Thanks, thanks. Um, this is just their natural. And I can't remember the colour for the pale pink, but you won't have the ball band, no. so... Um, I've had it ages. It, you know, it might not even be a colour they do anymore. Did you buy it specifically for one no. of these? No. Oh, right, okay. I can't even remember why I bought it. I didn't know if you had or It might be. I, bought, I might have bought it for a bear or something. So I'm getting a huge amount of practice in catching my floats. And, you know, that, that process of... I do go on to the, the two-fingered approach when I am... Uh, picking up my floats and it works absolutely fine cool. you know I really have to it, it's hard <laughs> it's like trying to clean your teeth with your left hand mm. it's tricky but I'm getting better all the time and who knows maybe I'll get to the point at some point where I can do I can't imagine that though I well imagine. I never thought I'd be able to do I watched an Arnie and Carlos video where they were talking about colour work dominance and I, I think this is a bit of a thing at the minute isn't it because what they said on it is that colour work dominance in they're in Norway aren't they doesn't exist you shouldn't actually have a dominant colour and if you do have a dominant colour when you look at a piece of knitting it means that your tension is just bad 
And that was the message that they were saying. And you saw one of them knitting colour work. You know, basically, he they were saying it doesn't matter whether, you know, your blue yarn is on top and then halfway through it's on bot on the bottom. It doesn't matter. And he they were, at, he, the person, yeah. I can't remember which one of them it was that was knitting. But the, the, he was changing, you know, which one was on his left hand and which one was on his right hand all the time. And I, I must admit, it did make me cringe a little bit because that's not my natural instinct to do that. But when you look at their finished pieces, they're they're beautiful and they look fantastic. I don't know. I, mean, I would say really whatever works, works for, for you. Yeah. You know, and working with the two hands and keeping one colour on one hand and one on the other works for me. And I kind of like the, the neatness of that. The thought of... It doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know if I can quite bring myself to do that. But whatever works for you, yeah. certainly. You what else is on your needles? Well, I've got a sock on the go. Haven't we always got a sock on the go? This is a pair of socks that I'm knitting for Bryony. And I'm using a set of minis that I dyed up in my last update. We were talking... I think me and Bryony were watching... We're, we're always watching a Harry Potter film on a weekend. Apart from last weekend, when we watched Murder on the Orient Express, three days running. Hold the phone, it's come out. It's out. Yes. And actually, Dan got it for us a couple of days beforehand, because it was out on Apple before. Yes. Yeah. Those are how films it should be made. It is the best film I have ever seen, and I'm not kidding when I say that. I think it's the most fabulous film. It's very good. Oh, amazing, amazing. So, Go anyway, see it. We, before we were watching that, we were watching The Prisoner of Azkaban. And I said to her, oh, I should dye up some minis that are Prisoner of Azkaban. And she was like, oh, can you do that? I said, yeah, I can do that. So we started chatting and we decided on characters and colours and things. So I dyed some up and they came out really nicely. And I thought, oh, I'm going to keep a set and I'm going to knit some socks, some scrappy socks for Bryony. One of the colours I'd already dyed, which is the looping one, I'd already dyed that previously so I knew what I was going to dye with that one but the others were all new. Ignore the heel because the heel is a separate one and I'll tell you about the heel in a second. I'll show you the side that's not got all the ends that I need to weave in. So here's the sock. Oh it's so fun. So we start with the night bus and then we've got Sirius. This is lovely looping. The Marauders map and Patronus. And then it starts repeating. And then when I got to the heel, I thought, oh, do you know what? I think I'm going to have something different for the heel. Because I didn't want to disrupt the flow of the stripes. I wanted them to keep that sequence. So I dyed up another mini of Molly Weasley. I've never done, you know, anything for, for Molly. I think it looks really nice. It's this pale pink and I put in speckles of purple, green and orange. And I think it's just really nice. So that's going to be the heels and toes, the Molly Weasley. And it's just really fun. I do love knitting scrappy socks. They go incredibly quick, I think. And Bryony's favourite that of the colours that I did is the Marauders map, which came out really nicely, I think. I used two colours to create the base colour, and then I did speckles on top for the, the kind of, you know, all the marks on the map. So I love that one. But actually, my favourite is Sirius. I don't know if you can see all the colours, but I used black and purple and a green, I think, and maybe a brown as well. I forget, I have written it down, but um, yeah, I just love how it came out and it knits up so pretty, which you wouldn't think for Sirius. But actually, you know, he's a really nice character. Yes, I've got all these little, aren't they fun? Really pretty. I've always got a Harry Potter sock on the go for Bryony because, as you know, she is addicted. And it's just 64 stitches, 2.25 mils. Cool. Look at that. That is the checked and squared socks with an eye partridge heel. And I used Kay's special two stitch pickup. Mm. And I even managed it myself. I did, I did. Did you? I did. Lovely, lovely colorway. Mm. Definitely my second favorite of the sock architecture patterns. So it's the checked and squared. It's quite similar to the street, but looks yeah. very different, actually. It does look very different. It's lovely. 
And it's really nice. Bryony absolutely loves these. So yeah. this is for Bryony. So the street are for K, the checked and squared are for B. Pretty. Yeah, it is. It really is. Not, I mean, not too far now to go until I get to the toe. I, I must write down, actually, I've been starting to use my book loads. And of course, my obsession now with stitch counts, although I'm not using a stitch count with this one, because this was on the go before that obsession began. We're not talking about that So th this was a more off-the-cuff <laughs> pattern. I have been just counting everything, and I do feel so much better about it. You know, I just feel like I know where I'm at. Because the thing that I hate, I really hate not knowing where I'm at. Mm -hmm. You know, how many rows have I done? Because just the hassle of counting them is just no, no. So, this, I mean, how much further? About that much, would you say? Or is that too much? Probably, oh, I don't probably too much. You just measure from the back of the heel here. Yeah, okay. And it okay. needs to be about seven and a half inches. Right, I'll measure it later. Not quite that yet, is it? No, no, definitely not. But, checked and squared, lovely yarn by Kay, thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, let's see how far I can get before, as I said with the, the Stree as well, the final Dan La project. Mm. So, that's enough talk mm. about knitting projects. Oh yes, I think it's time that we went and found out what is a pudding? Don't you? I do. Because, I mean, I don't know actually what the situation is with puddings in other parts of the world. Mm. I have no idea what they would call a pudding and what they wouldn't call a pudding. So, without further ado, let's find out as we start a brand new series of the Baker Bears Pudding Club with Kay Jones. We want to share with you some of the tastes of our childhood. These were the dishes that were served to us by our mums and our grandmas. We know our favourites, but we would love to know yours. So we're going to bake all of our favourite puddings. And at the end of the series, you can vote for your favourite. This year, why don't you join me for the Bakery Bears Pudding Club? So come on, let's get baking. So what actually is a pudding? Well, the Oxford Dictionary's definition of pudding is a cooked sweet dish served after the main course of a meal, a sweet or savoury steamed dish made with suet or flour. The word pudding is believed to come from the French boudin, originally from the Latin botellus, meaning small sausage, referring to encased meats used in medieval European puddings. In the UK and some of the Commonwealth countries, the word pudding can be used to describe both sweet and savoury dishes. In the UK, pudding is used as a synonym for a dessert course. Dessert puddings are a rich, fairly homogenous starch or dairy-based dessert, such as rice pudding, steamed cake mixtures such as treacle sponge pudding, with or without the addition of ingredients such as dried fruit, like you would get in a Christmas pudding. Savoury dishes include Yorkshire pudding, black pudding, suet pudding and steak and kidney pudding. In the United States and some parts of Canada, pudding characteristically denotes a sweet, milk-based dessert similar in consistency to egg-based custards, instant custards or mousses. In Commonwealth countries, these puddings are known as custards or curds if they are egg thickened, blancmange if they're starch thickened and jelly if gelatin based. Pudding may also refer to other dishes such as bread pudding and rice pudding, although typically these names derive from the origin as British dishes. Okay, before we get baking, let's just go over what equipment we're gonna need, or as I like to say, baking notions. So first of all, we're gonna need a steamer. Now don't panic. You know, I think sometimes, you know, these kind of pieces of equipment that we either have never used or um, something that's in the back of a cupboard that we don't use very often we can be a bit scared of. There's no need to be scared of it. 
and this is the one that I got. I just bought it from a local kind of home homewares shop and it basically sits, as you can see, it'll sit on various sizes of pan. So you're bound to have a pan that fits one of these sizes and I've just got it on top of one here. You want it to fit nice and snug and it's got a lid as we can see and this one's really good because it's got a little uh, steam hole and that's really really useful I think that's I think pretty much all steamers should have a steam hole and then you can see down in the bottom of the steamer it's just got a series of holes which allows the steam to rise through and to steam our lovely pudding other than that really it's just the normal normal uh, bakery notions I've got a mixing bowl just normal mixing bowl weighing scales an electric mixer not essential you can do it by hand but it's much quicker with an electric mixer and I think generally most people have one of these in their houses but like I say if you don't have one you can just use a balloon whisk and then the bowl to actually cook your pudding I'm using a Pyrex bowl you can get these really pretty pudding basin bowls so it's entirely up to you I mean Chances are you will have a bowl somewhere within your kitchen that is the right size. So this is the, the Pyrex bowl I'm going to be using. So you want this size of a bowl which is a litre. It le takes a litre in volume. And really just check that it fits inside your steamer. You know, just go through the bowls that you've got in your house and you want it just to sit nicely like that in the steamer. Lid goes on no problem. So let's take a look at our ingredients, what we're going to need to make this delicious pudding. So first of all, you're going to need some golden syrup. If you're in a country where you can't get this easily from a supermarket, I've had a look and you can get it on Amazon. We'll need some self-raising flour, caster sugar, and I think, again, in other countries this might not be called caster sugar, um, but it's the very fine white sugar. It's finer than a granulated. We're going to need some eggs. We're going to need two eggs and then either butter or... I always use stock to make cakes and you know some people might not want to use this because it is a margarine in effect but it does produce a really light and fluffy sponge. You can use butter if you prefer to use butter by all means use butter but I always find butter gives a slightly heavier sponge which is fine if you know if you don't mind that and you would prefer to use butter I always use stock. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take our pudding bowl and we need to butter it generously inside. Now I do use real butter for this not stock I always use just a little knob of real butter and we want to give it quite a nice coating and this just stops the sponge from sticking basically and gives it a nice colour too on the outside. So there we go, nice, as you can see that's quite a nice thick layer. Okay, so now we need to put our golden syrup in the bottom of our basin because what's going to happen is this pudding gets turned out the other way up and then the syrup will be on the top of it. So we're going to take our syrup and we're going to use about three tablespoons in the bottom. I sometimes just sort of squeeze in as much as I think looks like three tablespoons. Um, but really, it doesn't matter if it's a bit over. But let's measure it properly this time. So one. Oh, an extra bit went in. We don't mind that. This is the most delicious ingredient. If you've never tried golden syrup, I mean, anybody in this country, I think, will more than likely have had golden syrup at some time. But it's just so, so delicious. It's not like maple syrup. If you've never had it, it's nothing like maple syrup at all. It's r just really lovely. And traditionally, we always used to have it on, like, pancakes. Mm, maybe a tiny spot more, <laughs> just because we like it quite syrupy. So that's three tablespoons-ish into the bottom of your bowl and I'm not going to lick that however much I want to. So let's just set that to one side now, that's ready for our sponge mixture. So whilst we're preparing now the sponge mixture, turn your steamer on, 
you want about two inches of water in the bottom of the pan that's on the bottom of your steamer, if you understand that. And then just get the water to simmering point because it wants to always be at that simmering point, never boiling. Just wants that gentle little simmer the whole way through. So I've turned it on and that's heating up. So now we can do our sponge. Now first of all we need to just measure in the flat we need to measure in the flour, the butter and the sugar. Now it's equal measures of all of those and it's four ounces which is about 114 grams if you would rather measure it in grammage. I'm an old school ounce kind of baker. Four ounces of flour, don't bother sieving it. Some people probably probably would. I don't bother. And then the same of caster sugar. Four ounces. And then the same of your butter or baking margarine spread. If you're using butter, real butter, make sure that it's room temperature, you know, that it's not cold from the fridge. Four. And then we want two eggs into there. That's one. And two. So it's really simple, everything in together, no messing, no fuss. And now all we need to do is beat all that together. So I'm going to use an electric whisk. You can just use a balloon whisk if you don't have an electric one. But we just basically want to whisk it until it looks pale and light and fluffy. <laughs> Halfway through, I just get a spatula and just bring all those little bits in, you see, that haven't mixed. Just bring them all in to make sure that everything gets incorporated. Okay, so there's our mixture. It's lovely and pale and light and fluffy and ready to go on top of our syrup. So all we're going to do, don't panic when you think I'm going to put that on top of the syrup, it won't all mix together. You might think it will but it doesn't. So we're just going to take blobs of our lovely mixture and just drop it gently on top. Go around. And just cover all that syrup. See, we're just dropping it on, we're not messing with it or anything. You just want to make sure that you've covered all of that syrup. And now all we're going to do is just gently smooth out the surface, just level it off. And make sure that we can't see any syrup. So we've covered all the syrup there and then just go around and gently smooth off the surface. So we've encased all that lovely syrup. Let's get that last bit off, don't want to waste any. So now we need to cover it, ready for steaming. Now traditionally, you would put a baking parchment on there and tie string around it. I find that just using tin foil works absolutely fine and you don't have the fuss of tying string around the outside. So what I've got here, is a piece of tin foil and what I did, I gave it a little pleat, if you can see. So I got a square of tin foil, I put a pleat in the middle of it and then I put it on top of the basin just to get the shape, as you can see there. And then I just sort of trimmed off the excess. You do want a couple of inches all around the edge so that you can tuck it down nicely. The pleat is just to allow for expansion inside. If you want to put some string around it as like an extra security then you can but I've never found it necessary. As long as your foil comes, you know, a nice way down your, your pudding basin, you'll be absolutely fine. And this is just to make sure that the heat stays inside of your pudding and is not escaping. So all we need to do now is pop that into your steamer, make sure 
that your water is at simmering point and just so I always keep put it on my smallest kind of burner on top of my hob on the lowest setting and I find that that just keeps it nicely simmering. Check your water level kind of halfway through the cooking just to make sure it's not steaming dry, boiling dry and just top it up if it is but keep it at that simmering point and you want to steam it for about an hour and a half. So that's it then. But no it isn't because what we need to do now is we need to make some custard. Yes we do. So I will see you back in part two where we're going to get everything ready for that and we're going to make our custard. Yummy! Oh yes! It is gorgeous. It is. And you have to make it because at the end of the series we'll be opening up a vote and now don't worry if you don't make it you can still vote you know you can vote by looking and thinking which mm. one would I like best but you know let's try and play along I mean that would be cool wouldn't it if we played along we make them all and then at the end we open the votes up and we find out which is your favourite I'd love to think that there's people who are making it you know maybe this weekend and you know, you sat around you and your family's trying it for the first time, never having tried something like, you know, a steamed pudding before. And I'd just love to know what you think, because I can't imagine anyone wouldn't like it. No. Well, I don't think people will dislike any of the things that you make. No, because no. Because the beauty of these types of puddings are, I've never had, and I've had all sorts of weird ones. I remember my, my I'm sure that my gran made a steamed plum pudding once. Yeah. That sounds right. Was but my gran made a plum one, and know. I'm not a lover of plums. Well, then I do like... I like fresh plums. Yes, so do I. And we like prunes. But cooked, I'm not a lover oh, of them. Oh, right, okay. But, you know, like, like stewed, stewed plums. I was telling, actually, Kay, the other day, that we used to have stewed plums a lot. Mm. And what we used to do was, and I wonder if anyone else used to do this, and I wonder if you can tell me where this comes from. But me and my brothers, it was my gran, actually, mm. who kicked this off. We would be eating, our, and it was never made custard, it was always oh. bird's, no, it's bird's powder uh, packet. You see, I don't mind that. I mean, it's not too bad. I like packet foods and tinned but foods. We, we mustn't get too excited about the custard because, of course, you've not made that yet. No. You've not even seen that yet. But we would have, that's to come later, don't worry, custard later. We would have plums, we would have custard, we would eat them, the plums had stones in, and at the end, we would do a thing where we would go, for each plum stone that we had, we'd go... Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Yeah. And if you had more than that, you'd go round again. Crikey, would you have eaten more plums than that? Well, I'm certain that there were times that we were going over that. We were three strapping young, wow. <laughs> young chaps. You obviously would grow up to be whichever one you landed right. on. Right. What did you land on? Well, it was different every time, oh, so yeah. I can't remember. But you never wanted beggar man or thief, did you? Can I have some more plums, Yeah, engineer yeah. it so that you're Steal only like five plums. or whatever. Yeah. Nightmare. So, custard later. Do not miss it. And, of course, the vote will open. And that's really been the reason why we kicked off the Semblance of Knitting. To get, you know, get that mm. sort of wheel in motion with the, the vote. We want to make sure it was doable, ready for the Big Baker Bears Pudding Club. Um, but we won't open that back, as I say, until the end of the series. So it'll be later what we on should this do year. is, yes. because the Pudding Club, if you don't know what the Pudding Club is in this country, it's like an organisation where um, a group of people meet up once every however often, I'm not sure how often, in a particular pub or restaurant. And I think they have a meal first. And then they have this like tasting of all these puddings and they can be like 10 puddings. Wow. And they bring them out on platters like oh. this and introduce the pudding and everybody has a bit. And then they vote at the end of it for their favourite. What I would like to see is some Instagram videos of you bringing out the pudding, yeah, introducing yeah. it. Introduce your yeah. pudding. <laughs> so if you go away and you make the syrup sponge, please post a video yeah. of you introducing yeah. it to your family. And this see what, the yeah, let us know. And Bryony loves this pudding. Yes. Um, so and, do I. Yeah. Um, Who but, doesn't? But, what I'm saying is she's quite picky, isn't she? Now, now. But she loves it and she loved the custard and she won't eat bought custard. Serving suggestion, get the syrup Yeah. after you put the custard on and put syrup all over I don't do that. the top of your pudding. But Dan does. So you have steamed pudding, custard, additional syrup on the top. It's time for us to revisit 
for the final time this year, the Bakery Bears Bucket List. Yes, we have been putting activities onto that list for the last few episodes. And now it's time to find out which one are we going to try and do mm. this year. So just to give you a, a flavour, I won't go, and what I'll do is I'll hone in on the ones which are possible this year. Right. With a flavour of some of the other ones as well. So of course we had the Hadrian's Wall Walk, mm. which we could do this year. Right. We had the Cruise the Nile trip, oh. which I would love to do this yeah. year. But, well, it, it won't It's not going to happen, is it's it? It's not going to happen. No. Not while we have an utter fear of flying. <laughs> the Visit Lapland trip, which I would love to do this Christmas. But again, total fear of flying, so I'm afraid right now that one's out. The D-Day beaches. We could do that because that's, that's a, a very... Huge, it's a huge planning thing, that, though, I feel. The Railway Children trip. Yeah, very possible. The Nine Lessons and Carols trip. Very possible. Or the Royal Day Out also possible. Now, there were some more, but, you know, let's, let's, I think it's those final three. Right. Isn't it? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. As the year progresses, if the opportunity arose to do more, yeah. we could mm. take mm. that opportunity. Mm. Mm. But right now, I think we just need to, to commit ourselves to one. Right. What would you pick? <laughs> if you were picking out of those three. I know, well... You know, it's my birthday coming up at the end of May, isn't it? And that railway children thing I've wanted to do for a couple of years now. So, I mean, that might be nice to do that. Well, let's say railway children. Do you think? Yeah, and even if we don't do it in May, we can do it in the summer. Yes. So, I think we have selected our first activity from the bucket list. Yes. This year, we will definitely go and visit yes. all the filming locations. And you can go on the steam train. And go on the steam train. I love me a steam train. From the Railway Children oh. movie. I would encourage you all not to do the same thing. <laughs> Although, we do have a viewer who's very nearby. Oh, we do, we do, yes. we do. She's been on the train a few times. And she says it's marvellous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would encourage you all to do a bucket list. And to pick an activity mm. off that bucket list, it's been a really refreshing thing to do. And, you know, you only live once, don't you? And what we'll do at the end of this year is we, we shall review our bucket list, add in an activity for whatever ones that have, have come off, mm. and just keep it rolling. Mm. And that way then, no regrets. That Kay way. Jones, what's off your needles? Oh, yay! I do have a couple of things. Actually, I've got three things. Go, go, go. The first thing is, I finished the mittens. Do you know the wood cinder smoke? I was going to say wood smoke. Cinder smoke mittens, isn't it? That I was knitting last time. Finish them. I love these mittens. Apart from the thumbs. No, I hadn't. Fin I hadn't even finished. I was on the second one last no, time. No, I didn't think you enjoyed doing the thumbs. I didn't enjoy doing the thumbs. No, that's all. I, I never really enjoy doing the thumbs. And I've given up trying to pick up stitches that close the gap because no matter. How I do that, I always end up with a little gap. So now I don't even try. Because you've got that yarn, haven't you, inside from where you went back and picked up for the thumb. So I just use the tail end and sew the little hole shut and I don't see an issue with that and it looks absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah. it does. I can't see it all. I'll show you my insides of my thumbs. <laughs> so look! Aren't they cute? Who are they for? They're part of my mitmus. Excellent. So who knows? Who, who knows? knows? That's excellent. What an excellent feeling. They're so cosy. And I like that they're snug to your hand. I, I don't like mittens that are kind of baggy on your hand. These no. are really snug. But look, I think that's perfectly neat in there. Strange angle, wasn't it? So these are done. And I had this much left from a 100 gram ball. I don't think it's 50 grams, so I don't think I could get two pairs from one ball. But I'm gonna save this, and I, what I can always do is do contrast cuffs, you know, with two leftovers. I could easily make another pair out of two leftovers just by doing a contrast cuff, I'm sure. They're so warm, actually. You know, so this is the Style Craft Special Chunky, and this was silver. So it is 100% acrylic, and I've got to be honest, I am now very conscious of not, not buying acrylic. I say that, but of course, whenever you buy a sock yarn, it's always got nylon in, so, you know, what can you do, really? But I'm, what I'm not going to buy anymore is balls of 100% acrylic, 
because I just don't want to add to that plastic mountain I think that's my kind of feeling but I've already got this in my stash so I might as well use it hadn't I really as not so this is the first one and I will definitely knit this pattern again it's brilliant I absolutely love it and there is I have got a project page on Ravelry if you want to go and have a look but it's the cinder smoke mittens and there's also a matching shawl actually which is wow. really nice it's not in with this pattern it's a separate pattern but it's really pretty and I just love double moss stitch I just think it's brilliant and I love the you know that's my favorite bit is these is the slip stitches down the side I just think it's brilliant so very successful project and the first pair for my mitmus and I know it's March and I've only got one pair but you know even if I've only got 10 pairs at the end of the year then that's a big chunk of presents isn't absolutely it? it is I'm making the effort and also enjoying the process because these knit up so quick six millimeter needles brilliant brilliant project so highly recommend that and then the other thing that I knit and I knit this last Saturday I bought a book recently and I'll show you what that is and it's sort of book where having a bookmark <laughs> How many miles are you, or feet are you claiming for the uh, climb every night? Yeah, mat? I don't know. I think people need it to know. It took a bit there. of time. One foot? It took me a few hours. Did it? Yeah. Two feet? I don't know, I'll have to think about it. I haven't thought about that yet. But I've missed a bookmark, and I'll, I'll tell you about the book in a second. But I decided to try linen stitch. I've never knit linen stitch before, and I've seen things knit in linen stitch, and absolutely loved the look of it. But I'd always thought it was just too laborious. Well, Turns out I really enjoyed it and it is, you know, it is kind of laborious, but it's not difficult. What you're doing basically is you're, you're knitting one, slipping one, but when you've knit one, you have to bring the yarn forward to slip and then take it back to knit. And then on the reverse row, this is knit flat, so on the wrong side row, you're doing the same thing, but purling one, slipping one, and you, again, you have to take the yarn backwards and forwards every stitch and I thought I'd just find that irritating but I didn't at all I really liked the kind of rhythm of it and it, it kind of reminded me of the double moss stitch you know because it's knit one pearl one effectively and I really liked it and I just used a little scrap of fingering weight yarn I cast on 16 stitches on 2.25 yeah 2.25 millimeter because I wanted a nice dense fabric and this is um, BB's blanket colourway that I dyed up. So here's my little bookmark, isn't it sweet? So this is the linen stitch side and the back of linen stitch just kind of looks like moss stitch. It's also very pretty. And I was going to put some little tassely things on this but then I thought no I'm not because I just liked the simplicity of it. it took me a few hours on Saturday, we were watching Murder on the Orient Express, I'm sure. And it's just really, really pretty. And linen stitch, if you've never done it, it produces a fabric that looks woven. It doesn't look knit, does it? No. And I was knitting it and I showed it to Brian and of course she's like, ooh, I'd like one of those. <laughs> so I've got to do one of her, one for her in a looping, in the looping colourway. You know, you could make a stack of these, couldn't you, through the year? And I know some people like keeping little gifts in their house for like people that might drop in over Christmas and things like that. And it's a perfect little thing, especially for people who you know love to read. But the reason I knit this is because I bought this book. Simple Abundance, a day book of comfort and joy by Sarah Ban Brethnack. And I saw this on Potter and Bloom. Emma was reading it and I just thought, oh, I've never seen that before. I didn't know what it was, never heard of it. I'm gonna go and have a look. So I went onto Amazon and had a look and I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna order that. It's actually quite an, an old book. It was published in 1995. Wow. And this is like a 10th anniversary special, this edition. And she's the author has written like um, an extra piece at the beginning. It's basically like, a, an essay for every day so every day of the year you get a different little piece of writing and what I've been doing I haven't gone back and read from January I just picked it up from the day that it was on and every morning before I do anything when I get up in the morning I make a cup of tea and I sit down and I'm reading that day and do you know what it's been absolutely brilliant that's great hasn't it and I've been saying mm. to you every day what it's been that day and it, it just 
I think what it does is it starts the day off for me in a really positive way. That's great. You know, and I'm thinking about this thing that I've read all through the day and just thinking, oh, I'd really like to do that and how can I incorporate that? And, and I think just having that positive thing to think about through the day, it's just, I think it's, it's just been brilliant. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, when I posted a picture of this, have said, oh, you know, I've, I've got that book, I've had it for ages and I must dig it out and reread it. And so I think a lot of people will know about this, maybe more in America than here. One of the things, actually, I've combined about about four days worth because they're all, they all kind of, not go together, but one day she was talking about hope chest. We don't really do hope chests in this country, no. but I, I know what one is and I, I think I think it's a lovely, a lovely thing. So there was a day about a toy chest, there was a day about meditation. I've just sort of combined all these things and I'm in the process of doing something, which I'll talk about next time, that sort of combines all these things. So I'm, I'm really, really loving it and I would really recommend this book to anybody. And in fact, I, I bought a copy and sent it to Nana Wendy for Mother's Day because I just thought it's the kind of thing that she would really like as well. Just, yeah. you know, dipping in and out of. And we all went through it and got, you know, looked at our birthdays and to see what it said on our birthdays, which you think is always fun. So I'm, I'm really, really loving it. And it's very quickly become a little morning ritual for me. And it's, I think, anything that starts your day off in yeah, a positive yeah. way you're right there especially when you've got a brain that works like mine which is generally anything but positive it will try and focus on something that's worrying <laughs> you know if i can focus on something that makes me worry then i will so to focus on something first thing in the morning that's just positive and makes me think about doing positive things is in my book, a brilliant thing. So, the last thing I've finished is a, blan a blanket block. Now, there's a reason, and I will tell you what that reason is. Isn't that pretty? Because you love knitting blankets. Well, this is true. It wasn't a chore. Secretly. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to admit, when I realised that the thing I want to do, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, meant that I had to knit another block, <laughs> okay. I was like, I'll do that. We're setting up a new group. It's called Blankets Anonymous. We should do that. It's for people who are addicted to knitting blankets. <gasps> At every session you have to come along and bring your blanket. And you have to stand up and say, Hello, my name's Kay. My name's Kay. And I'm addicted to knitting yeah, blankets. Yeah. I've just cast on another stitch in time blanket. I think that I think this should be a thing. We should totally do this. My name's Dan and I can't stop thinking about colourwork sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I love about blankets. I think it's this overriding fear of comfort, isn't yeah. it, with a blanket? Because they keep you warm and they, you know, they're snuggly and you, you know, you give them to your family and it's that kind of feeling I think I love about blankets. And if I can find a blanket where I can knit it and it feel like I'm finishing things as I'm working through it, even better. So I'm, I've knit a block and this is my stitching time pattern. Here is my original Stitching Time blanket, which I'm sure some of you will remember. It's a while ago that I knit this now. I knit this to reflect the 12 months of the year. So it goes from January up here, and I put colours in that reflected that month. So this one is January, February for Valentine's, March that we're in now with all the crocuses coming up. And then the next one is April, May, June <laughs> and then it goes down July, August, September and then October, November, December. What's that? November. November I put in bright colours and they're all sparkle yarns for fireworks night. Firework night. This one? Oh yeah and it's some socks in that I think. It oh, was right. a self-striping yarn. Goodness gracious that yeah. is a bright green. And this one is December which I love you know it's all Christmas colours. So I knit this, I don't know how long ago I knit this actually. You know, my intention at the time was to put out a pattern for it and I just never got round to it, I think for various reasons. I did do some tutorials for the patrons on it and I know that quite a few people have knit their own just from those tutorials. But do you know what I just thought, it's always been on my mind that I wanted to write up the pattern so I am going to write up the pattern for the Stitching Time Blanket. So to do that I wanted to take photographs 
all the way along the process so that's why I've knit another square. I just think this came out so pretty. Yeah. I just decided to use, I just wanted it to be as many pretty yarns as I could possibly find and I think it just looks gorgeous and it kind of makes me want to just carry on and knit another one. You know, I just, this is like a centerpiece. Yeah, well I was going to say. It's got five, just five ridges all the way around. Well, it seems... It will be the most beautiful blanket. It seems wrong and, uh, not to finish well, it off. Well, I might just, I know, I might just carry on. Ugh. You know... I'm enabling her. I know, well, not as if I need it. What am I doing? This one's figgy pudding. I wanted to put some figgy pudding in. Can you see that one's figgy pudding? Oh, it's one of my favourite colours I've ever dyed. I'd be no good as a sponsor, would I? No. And a lot of these yeah, actually... You have to say sponsor. I really want to cast... <laughs> I want to cast on another block. Just, just sit Stop down. Stop me. Just... <laughs> I need intervention. Work through the process. <laughs> but a lot of these colours are that um, me and Sarah, Sherlock Knits, we did a little advent mini swap at Christmas. And these are a lot of the ones that were in there. I just picked out the ones that I thought looked the most pretty. They were all pretty, but I wanted kind of variegated ones. So. Did, did you pick out the ones you actually liked? <laughs> Sarah. She knows, she knows what you, luckily, she knows what he's like. So yeah, so I've knit this block and I took photos all the way along and I'm, I'm gonna be writing up the pattern very soon and um, hopefully within the pattern as well, there'll be some video tutorials. But it's just one of those things I've always wanted to do because I loved knitting it so much. And I, look, you know, I, and I think the reason I loved it, I know we all love mitered squares, but the reason particularly I love knitting it like this is because it makes it very portable you know if you're going away on holiday you can just take enough scraps to knit one or two blocks and it fits in a project bag and you don't have to lug you know the entire big blanket around with you and you can just carry on knitting blocks and make it as big as you want you know this one's 12 to match the seasons the months but you can knit it as big as you want. You can put more mitered squares into each block if you wanted to. It's so adaptable and yet portable. And each time you finish a block, it feels like you've finished a project. And I never feel like I've got something half finished and I don't like that feeling. So I think that's another reason why I love it. I want some custard. Ooh. So I don't care if you've got more projects to show. You're gonna make me some custard. I and and I'm going to eat it. The custard's lovely. Even Bryony liked the custard. So are you ready to find out how to make custard? Let's go find out. Okay, let's talk custard. Now, you can buy custard. Absolutely, you can buy it. But what I will say is, there really is no comparison, in our opinion, between a bought custard and a homemade custard and I think it might seem that it's just too much of a fuss to make it but it's actually really simple and I think a lot of things are you know I think mentally you think oh my goodness that's just way too complicated to make but actually it's not at all right so let's just whiz round our ingredients that we're going to need for the custard so first of all we're going to need some cream I'm using single cream you can use double cream if you prefer this is like a lighter cream is thinner and then a double cream is a thicker cream but I'm just going to use single cream we're going to need three egg yolks so I've got my eggs here we're going to need a level teaspoon of corn flour now this is kind of like the secret ingredient what corn flour does is it stops it curdling this is the danger with custard, it can curdle really easily and this is what puts a lot of people off making it. If you add that little bit of corn flour, even if it looks like it's going to curdle, if you take it off the heat and keep beating, it'll come back to smooth. And then we're going to need some caster sugar again. And then the last thing is some vanilla extract. Make sure when you buy this that it's proper vanilla extract and not those little, you can get those little sort of jars of vanilla essence. Don't get that, that's nasty. There's Usually there's alcohol in that and it's, they're just not pleasant at all. You want the pure vanilla extract. This is actually a paste. I buy the, the kind of paste version. But there is a, an extract as well. This is just thicker and it's you see the little seed. Um, 
little black seeds in it. So we're going to need a little bit of vanilla extract. So we're going to now heat up our cream. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out the cream. It's 275 mils. Pop it into a saucepan, heat it up on the hob. Now you want to heat it to just boiling point, but not, you know, you don't want it rolling boil, going mad. Just to that point where it just starts to boil. That's the, the temperature that you want it at. So I'll put that on now to heat up. That's 250, I'll need a little bit more. Okay, so whilst your cream is heating up, we're going to mix together the other ingredients. So we're going to need three egg yolks, just the yolk, not the white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the egg and hopefully this won't be a disaster. That's how I... Just get the yolk, that's one. And you can, if you know, if you want to be um, really sort of fruit, not frugal, but if you want to use everything up, you can always make meringues with your egg whites. Two, three. And then we into your egg yolks, we want to put a level teaspoon of the corn flour. So level, level teaspoon and then we want a level tablespoon of caster sugar. There we go, that's our sugar. And then just a couple of drops of the vanilla. I tend to just pour it and just guess it, you know, just want a little bit. There we go. This is a paste, so you don't actually need as much. If it's an extract, you just need kind of a little bit more. So we just want to mix all that together. And the egg yolks are what, it's what's gonna give the custard its traditional sort of yellowy, golden, pale yellow sort of color. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, our cream is hot and we've mixed the, our other ingredients, we're going to add the hot cream to the, um, egg, the other ingredients, your eggy ingredients. So we're not going to put the egg to the cream, we're going to put the cream into the egg and then we're going to mix it and put it back in the pan. So let's do that. I keep mixing and we're going to put it back in the pan. Get everything out, all those little vanilla seeds. And now, we're going to heat it until it thickens. This should only take a few minutes. Just keep whisking. And you can see it's just this, it's not the bright yellow colour that you see from shop bought custard it's a, just a beautiful natural pale oh I don't know well pale egg yolky colour isn't it even if it looks now if you were at this point and it looked like it was curdling take it off the heat and keep beating it and it will come back to smooth keep going until um, you, it starts to kind of simmer once you see it simmering it's not really going to get any thicker at that point and using the vanilla bean paste as well means you just get those little, can you see the little vanilla-y speckles? And it's just so pretty. Yeah, I think we're there. So you can see it's just a lovely, if you can see the thickness of it, it's just a beautifully glossy consistency. And ready for our pudding. So we've got our custard ready now. Now that can, you can make that kind of just 10 minutes before you, your pudding's ready and then just serve it all together or you can make it in advance, let it cool down and then just gently reheat it, whatever you want to do or you could have it chilled like I said as well. Okay so it's had an hour and a half steaming, it's all ready and I'm going to get it out. I've got on my marigolds <laughs> just because it's obviously hot so I just put on rubber gloves just to lift it out. So we're just going to take it out. 
I'll leave my gloves on to turn it out. Um, so I take the little foil off. Ooh, lovely. So to turn it out, pop a plate on top and flip. And it just drops. You can see it dropped almost instantly. And then lift it off. <gasps> Look at that. I'll now take my gloves off. Oh, I wish you could smell it. Well, you'll be able to smell it when you make it. So you can see that all the syrup on top and that's soaked down into, oh, it will now drop down and soak down into the sponge. So we're going to cut a piece and have some. I'm just going to have a tiny piece. I hope you can see how lovely, oh, it's boiling. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. I'm ready to try it. I'm so excited. I kind of know what it tastes like because I've had it loads before, but I've not had it with this custard. Are we ready? Oh my goodness. It's amazing. It's absolute heaven. I can't even begin to describe to you how delicious this is. It's so simple. I hope you realise just from watching how simple this is to make. Everybody's going to love this. You know, you're going to look like the most amazing domestic goddess when you make this because it's such an impressive dessert. It's not even a dessert. It's such, such an impressive pudding. And yet so simple and so delicious and you've really got to try it. So fantastic. I hope you enjoyed that. So where do we go from here? Well, I will tell you where we go from here. A spot and dick. So I will see you then for more Bakery Bears and Pudding Club. Yes! We have our syrup sponge, we have our custard, and I've eaten it all already. It's all gone. It's delicious. Yeah. That custard, it's like there is no comparison to any other custard no, that you've ever had. It's nothing like. I mean, if you don't shop bought custard. I think if someone doesn't like custard, yeah, then you would like that. Well, I, I don't. You see, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because I hate anyone out there to think I've never liked custard my whole life. Right. I'd be slightly worried to go as far as to say it might win you over. Custard for me. It was always just a thing that, you know, you had to have it on certain puddings because, you know, cream just, just didn't seem right. Mm. Like a crumble. Cream never seems right on a crumble. Oh, no, I like cream on a crumble. For me, I think custard is, it, you know, it just, it works better. But, you know, custard in its own right, out of a tin or powdered, just not pleasant. This oh, is that's... unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It, it doesn't taste anything like shop I mean, custard. Maybe it's... Kay's right. Maybe, you know, even if you've despised custard your whole life, you should try this. Give it a go. It's definitely worth it. It's like a food a source. Go. It doesn't take very long to make. It's a brand new. And doing it the way that I do it, adding that extra something that I mentioned. Oh, I can say I can't. Adding the corn flour makes the difference and, you know, you won't have that curdling problem, which I think is the thing that scares a lot of people. So that custard will go with pretty much everything that comes now in the series. So we obviously won't make the custard every time. No. <laughs> Trust me, if you do it once, you'll be, you'll doing, be doing it, it more it. than once. You'll be making a vat of it. Because yeah. obviously if you wanted to make a bigger amount, you could just double all the quantities that I gave yeah. you. The Pudding Club will be back, not next episode, but the episode after. Yeah. Yes, because next episode is finally the launch of the new adventures of the Bakery Bears season two. But now, would you believe, it's time for the Andy Bits. Andy Bits. Oh my goodness. Well, now, this? now. Oh, and of course, when it comes back, The Pudding Club, episode 97, it's time for Spotted Dick. I shall say nothing more no. other than we've begun with Kay's favourite and then we're moving on to my favourite. Yes. It is delicious. It's stunning. Yeah. Beyond stunning. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm not making it now. I need a light. <laughs> I haven't too. made it for, gosh, the, it might be two years. The last time Kay made it, I had to have a lie down afterwards. Literally, because he ate so much of it. Because I ate it all. I thought it was going to throw up, he'd eaten so much. It's it was what, just ridiculous. The first time she made it, 
I, I, I was downstairs, she got upstairs, I tried a bit, I was like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. I ate the whole bowl, served myself another portion, poured on the creme anglaise, the custard that Kate made, went upstairs and pretended it was my first bowl. <laughs> He did do that. Oh. That's obscene, it isn't was, it? It was so nice. You see, it's the currants and, oh, it's just, it's everything that I love in a pudding. Mm. Oh, it's just adorable. It's, it's, it is really comforting. The first thing that we need to do in the end of bits is we need to update you all on the Climb Every Mentum mm. Cow. So, where are the teams? Team Finds is, of course, the knitting team. And the knitting team is open for any podcast patron to join in with. Just head over to our Ravelry group and start knitting some stuff, posting it, and claiming your feet. So how far... <laughs> that sounds funny. How far have you knit 5,372.5 feet? That's how far... Brilliant, though, that's that, how far you've it? knit this year. So Gosh! Yeah, it is a, just a superb effort, Amazing. to be honest. I mean, it really is. And I think you just pipped 3,000 feet this. It was like 3,083 feet. And I should, have, I should have a prize at the end of this, I think, for the most um, original thing that's been knitted. And so far, that has to go to Talia. Yes. She knit like a cosy for her stethoscope. And she sent me a message saying, how many feet can I claim for this? Well... After I kind of laughed for five minutes and thought, how on earth am I going to come up with a number for that? I did, but that was brilliant. Yes, I think definitely at the end of the year, there needs to be a prize for yes. the most bizarre... Most bizarre and original yes. project. Yes. So far, I would say that's Talia that's in the lead. Absolutely. So see if you can beat that, everybody. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even work out what it was when, when I looked no, at it initially. I was like, what is it? Yeah. I don't even know how she's knit that. So, team points. The knitters are at 22,372.5 feet. That oh, is yeah. past advanced base camp. The knitters are at that? Yes, because we started at 17,000 feet, didn't oh, we? Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I was yeah. confused. Right, okay. Because with this yeah. challenge, we, we started at the height which the climbers, climbers start, start. Which is base camp, yes. And so they yeah. start at 17,000 feet. I've got that. So if we add 17,000 to 5,372, we get... 22, 372.5. Wow. But where is Team Cool? Now, Team Cool is the runners and the walkers. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I know it's been snowing in England, but we've got to get moving. <laughs> it's Sarah's fault because she yes. fell downstairs and she couldn't run for ages. Oh. It's a superb effort, to be perfectly honest. It's much better than any month's efforts on last year's, right. so you know, the, the, the walk, I mean the walkers to be honest, the walkers are creaming it, I think five of them oh, I need to start doing did that. over a hundred miles yeah. in the month, wow. I mean just That's brilliant, a, a, amazing, so where are they at, well 3,238.66 feet Gosh, wow, that's good going. It really is, really is. So since the start of the year, so January and February. Um, and where are we from 17,000? We're at 20,238.66 feet. And this is what it looks like on the mint. So keep knitting and keep running or walking. And remember, the running or walking team is open to anyone. The knitting team is open to Bakery Bears patrons. We've spoken about spring into wool. Yep. Get involved with that yep. and win some tickets and come and see the debut of my tank top. Oh, oh yes, Etsy shop update. Ah, oh, right. I've got a few little skeins to show you if you're interested. The next update is going to be, if you're watching this one on the day that this comes out on Friday, it's tomorrow. So it's Saturday, 7pm as normal, GMT. And I've got a few lovely skeins here. I will bring them down. I've done quite a nice mixture this time actually and I've still got some more dyeing to do. Are any of these the freeze dried ones? What? The ones that went on the line and froze. <gasps> this was hilarious. <laughs> Last week when you know it was freezing cold what I still even like to do is I just hang them outside just to uh. drip most of the water off you know before I um, put them on the air to dry. They'd literally been out there 10 minutes. There was only two or three skeins out there. And I went out to get them in and they, they, they were frozen. They were solid. I've bananas. never seen anything like it in my life. Bananas. It's a new technique. Unbelievable. <laughs> Freeze set. I couldn't believe it. Where? 
So I've done a few skeins. I'll do some more next time as well. But this is the colourway that's based on Lovely Snape. So it's blacks and navy blue and then lots of little pops of extra colour in there because, you know, black and navy blue for his robes. But then he's lovely, isn't he? He's lovely Snape. So he's dark like that, but underneath it, he's got the loveliness and that's all the little specks of colour. So there'll be a few skeins of after all this time. I've dyed up some mermaid's tail, which I haven't done for a while. And I just love this colourway. I need some socks in this. It's so pretty. It's blues and lilacs and pinks dyed in a way that gives like this watercolour kind of effect. And I love I love that dyeing technique. It's, it's really comes out really, really pretty. So there's some mermaid's tail. And then this is a new colourway. And I used the same technique, actually, but with different colours. And oh, my goodness, I'm absolutely in love oh, with wow. this. I'm in love with this colour. So it's it's kind of shade there's it's there's lots of colours layered into this, but it's shades of sort of blues and greens and then there's a bit of sort of pinky coming through. And this is a uh, water sprite, because it just made me think of fairies for some reason. So it's water sprite. And then this is another new colourway, and it's a kind of lavender lavender base with lots of specks of like oranges and golds and browns. And that should be called Lavender Brown. Bryony said that. That's so funny, that's exactly what Bryony said. I was going to call it Fairy Dreams, but maybe I will call it Lavender Brown, actually. This one might be Lavender Brown. Maybe it should be. And I love that one. And then um, there'll also be a few skeins of DK weight. I'm trying out a new base and I love, it's beautiful, this base. It's DK and it's a merino cashmere nylon base. So perfect for DK weight socks because it's got the nylon in and also it's beautifully soft because of the cashmere. And I've dyed up three colourways so there'll just be a couple of each of these. But I thought I'd pop them in the shop just to see if anybody was interested in DK weight because I haven't done that for a while. So I did some Footloose which is the colour I did last time but I dyed up a couple on DK and I think it looks fantastic. It's like uh, bright pinks and oranges and peaches. It's just super fun. So that's Footloose because I was listening to Footloose as I was dyeing this colour and it just made sense. It was bright and fun and dancey. So there's Footloose and then I've got some sem two semi-solids in greys. Really pale grey and then a darker one. And I just thought these are lovely for colour work. Either, you know, is like this or with the dark. So the dark is graphite and the pale is cloud. So there'll be a little bit of DK as well. And then I'm gonna do some more dyeing actually. What I want to do is these little minis that I've got of Molly Weasley. I want to try dyeing up a colorway that's the burrow to put that with as a sock set. So you'll get a mini, we a mini Weasley, <laughs> a mini Molly Weasley and then the burrow. So I'm gonna try that out and see how see how that works but I've got to do a bit of experimenting to do that. So that's just a few of the ones that will be going in to the update. What about the Never Gonna Knit You Up prizes? Ah, it's finished hasn't it the Never Gonna yes. Knit You Up Cal? Never Gonna Knit, knit You Up Cal has finished. Thank you everybody for participating. We had 102 entries cool. and we've got three prizes. So I've drawn for prizes just random number as normal. So the first prize is a pattern from lovely Madeline, Madeline Windsor, and it's... Who will be appearing yes. in the next issue of Knitability. Brilliant. And it's the Midnight Sherbet Wrap, which is a brioche wrap. It's really, really beautiful. So the winner of that was number 60, and that's Michelle from Georgia. So Michelle, if you're watching, what I'll do is I will just let Madeline know your Ravelry name and then I'll get her to send that pattern over to you. Brilliant, well done. And then we have two skeins of yarn, I've got them here. The first skein was this one from the Knitting Swede. I actually bought this at the last Spring Into Wool. I remember. Yeah, and I've just never used it and I thought it would make a lovely prize. I'm not, husband, it, he's it a lovely really, man, I hope yeah. he's at this, this Yeah, shop. I just think it, that just needs knitting up and I'm just, I've just not got around to it. So it's, it's, a, it's called Mini Rainbow Carbon, so it's dark grey and then like little rainbow stripes. 
It's 60% blue face, 20% alpaca, 20 silk, 400 meters. Perfect for socks. So that prize was won by number 41, and it's Scully Bun Bun. Oh. Scully, you you won that, which I think you'll really love it because I know you like those kinds of colours. So Scully, I know your address. I will just send that out to you. So brilliant, well done. You know blue face Lester's. Yes. Do they have blue faces? It's like a sort of blackish, but I think probably if you look at it in a certain light, it might look. It's like a sort of cool. black, blacky, grey right. sort of colour. Cool. But it must have been perceived as being blue, I think. Yeah. And then the last prize is the, the lovely Mondim yarn, a lovely sock yarn, Portuguese. And that one was won by number 11, and that's Min in Singapore. Oh, wow! Min, you've won that! Yes! How lovely. So, Min, would you mind just sending me a message just with your address and I'll get that sent out to you. Singapore, how exciting. We had a good chat with Min on the last pot about yeah. Singapore fried rice. We did, and we, we established did. <laughs> that they don't have that in Singapore. Yeah. yeah. It's a big Swiss. <laughs> so, Min, just send me a note, would you, with your address and I'll get that sent out to you. So, well done, everybody. That was yes. fun knit along. So, we haven't got any knit alongs ongoing right now, but we will be having the drippity drop socks. Cal starting, as I said before, on the 20th of March. Well, we do have one this long ongoing, and that's the plan oh, from Oh, of course, yeah. sorry, yes, yes, I meant shorter term ones. Yes, you know, this yes. open to all. Open to all. But that um, will change, though, as you say, on the 20th of March. Yes, with so the we'll, drippity drops. Yeah, and I'll, I'll post on, I'll open a thread for that, for the drippity drop knit along when it gets closer to the time. Once the pattern goes up, I'll open a thread. You've bought some things. And yes. Yes, I bought. What have you bought? Just a couple. Well, actually, I bought one thing and I was given one thing. You bought one thing. Well, there's three. You bought one thing. Yeah, that's one thing. That's one purchase. Back me up, everybody. Right. Okay, you added the word purchase after you said <laughs> I bought one this thing. This is one thing. It's in one bag. <laughs> that's genius. I think I'll think you'll find everybody thinks I'm right. Actually, there's two things I was given. I apologise. <laughs> so, so we've gone from one thing to five. No, right. this is one thing. I saw this sock yarn. Gosh, it might have been Min. It might have been, was it Min? I think it might have been. It might have been. It might, might. Min, was it you that was knitting these socks? It, I think I it think, was. I think it might have been. Yes. And I'd seen it previously and not been able to find it. However, you I found find it. find it? No. No. It's a new yarn from Reggie. I think it's new. And it's cotton. It's called... Never. It's cotton. Well, it's cotton I've and... I've some cotton socks. It's cotton and night... It's 72% cotton, 18% polyamide, 8 and 10% polyester. Right. But no wool. And this, quite, you know, I do sometimes get asked, can you recommend a sock yarn that doesn't have wool? Because I know some people are allergic. Brilliant, this is brilliant. Are you going to knit, knit a sort of pair? Well, that's why I bought three skeins. Okay, yeah. Um, and it's based on fruit. It's called Tutti Fruity Colour. Right. Fingering weight, usual sort of fingering weight, you get 420 metres for 100 grams. So I got three colours. I got the watermelon, which is number 02421. Look at the watermelon. And it obviously knits up into like stripes. So I've got watermelon. Those ones I think I was thinking for Ryany maybe. Maybe I was. And then I got this one which is Kiwi and these ones I was gonna do for Dan, which is 02418. Lovely Kiwi socks. I look quite the dapper fellow with those yeah. on. Yeah. Do you think it's too bright? Look. No. And then I got dragon fruit, which is very exciting. That's 02419, which is pinks and greens, and then a little bit of grey, I think that is. Dragon fruit, how lovely. So this will be fun to try. And I found these at myfabrics.co.uk. But actually, it came from Germany, which I thought was interesting. The invoice is from, Ger from Germany. It was shipped from there, so... And then I was given a couple of skeins, which is really nice. I, um, lovely Sarah, again, Sherlock Knits, was de-stashing some yarn, and I saw this one. And it's some Felici, and I've been looking, actually, for this colourway, because it's called Steamer Trunk, and it just reminded me of Newt Scamander's suitcase. Yeah. 
So I wanted this to knit socks for Bryony. So I got that, so thank you, Sarah. And then I was sent another lovely skein, and it's London House Yarns, and it's a sock set, and it's in the colourway Papillon. I think it was a club that she did, as I understand it. So it's self-striping, and then a mini to go with it. So that's super lovely, and thank you so much. So yeah, lucky girl. And that's all your purchases? Yes. Cool. So that's it. That is the end of the very first episode containing the Baker Best Pudding Club. This will go down in history. Will it? Yes. Gosh, I hope you Because it's it. so unbelievably delicious. Nigella, I'm not. This will be the day that changes people's lives forever. Oh, stop. Custard, yes. <laughs> Syrup, yes. So, we will see you in two weeks. I shall tempt fate once more by saying we will be launching... <laughs> The new adventures of fake yeah, I'm sure. Prepare I'm sure. for the beast from the east too. No. I shall have to create something about skiing, if that's the case. They'd have to call it something else, wouldn't yeah. they? Ah, yeah. ah. The beast from I've the east, that. the return. That's it. So thank you all so much for Thanks, watching. Thanks, everybody. And we will see you in two weeks for more. Yay. Bye. Bye. Is it sitting and knitting? It's Dan and Kay that take a repairs. Enthusiasm's not quitting. They'll take you to fabulous places of which their favorites they'll share. You better buy a pad and get yourself a bakery bear. You'll find yourself in a castle when watching the bakery bears. It never feels like a hassle to sit and watch the bakery bear.